It's a baby, mom. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time meeting baby lion. That's lion. Good girl, Alice. Good girl. Yeah. That's the baby. That's a baby. <laughs> Is that the second bottle? Oh man, she drank a lot, huh? Is that the baby? Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Amra from the Ramblin' Richardsons. If this is your first time here, welcome. Before we get into the video, I know, I know it's been a pretty long time since I've uploaded a video. And it was a long time before I uploaded that video, but I'm going to ask for your patience as I do have a three and a half week old baby at home. I did have a few things to talk to you about today and you guess it, it's about my baby girl and our fall IVF journey really. So before we get started in the video, make sure you go down there, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, that way you don't ever miss any of the videos that we make. I do have a couple of clips I'll throw in here and there. Um, of course, again, just a disclaimer, we will be blurring out her face uh, for the time being, of course, just for her anonymity. It's a security thing. Nothing against y'all, it's not that we don't want to share that with you guys, but if you know us, and you have us personally on social media, you can see all of the wonderful baby photos and videos we've posted there and get your film. So today's video, we kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about just what went on during the whole process of my wife giving birth to bringing our daughter home. It's, it's been a journey. So, on, <laughs> she's crying. You got her, honey? The, there's a bottle sitting out on the counter ready for her. Ah, motherhood. So, we'll start from the day of birth, June 24th. Um, my wife woke me up pretty early in the morning. She said that she just wasn't feeling quite right. She was having pains and now there are things called Braxton Higgs contractions. They are basically false contractions, which is normal to have in a pregnancy. She said this was different, not quite the same. So we went ahead and hopped in the car, went up to the hospital, and sure enough, my wife was one centimeter dilated already. So the nurse up there rallied the troops and we got a room and labor and delivery. So it took about 12 hours or so for my wife to get to full 10 centimeters is when you're fully dilated. She got a um, epidural around 10, 10 30 or so. Um, the nurse came in and said that she got the green light to go ahead and start pushing and that it can take on average about two hours to get through the pushing part. Just crazy. So we started pushing and we noticed that the baby's heart rate dipped when we did that. And they thought that the cord was wrapped around her neck. So she stopped us pushing, checked in with the doctor. It's fairly common for the cord to be wrapped around the baby's neck. So doctor said, go ahead and keep pushing. During the second push, the doctor actually came in from another uh, room. She had been, I think, doing a cesarean section. She came in 
and was like, push, 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 push. And she was like, okay, wait, stop. Let me get ready because this baby's coming right now, probably on the next push. And doctor didn't even have her gloves on yet. So doctor got ready. We waited a few moments. And then on the next contraction, she pushed, push, 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 push. And out came our baby girl. Push time was probably 15 minutes, maybe less, which is, I mean, an amazing blessing that she didn't have to go through hours and hours and hours of actual push time. Our daughter was born a month early, almost to the day. That helped the trauma not be so crazy. I cut the cord and I'll put a photo of me cutting the cord and take all the other bits out um, that are not PG. <laughs> Grandma got to come up and spend some time with her and hold her, but they wanted to make sure she could pass what's called um, a car seat study. Uh, because she was a preemie, they wanted to make sure that she would be able to ride in her car seat home without any complications, which only takes about an hour and a half. And I finally came back and told us that um, Lion had been desatting in her car seat study. What that means is there's a desaturation of oxygen in the blood. Your oxygen level and your heart rate, and those together make your blood oxygen level. So your heart rate, doo -doo 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 -doo, and your breath, how much oxygen is getting into the blood when your heart pumps gives you your blood oxygen level. So what was happening is her heart rate was dropping and she was holding her breath for a really long time or she was stopping breathing altogether and her blood oxygen level was getting dangerously low. <laughs> it's scary to hear this, but we're told that this is fairly common with newborns that are born this premature or even more premature. Um, and that these events happen, they eventually will grow out of it. We had to start a countdown, five days. We could go five days without an event like this and we could pass the car seat study again, then we could come home. And every single day we would get up and go back to the NICU in the morning and see her and feed her and have what they call touch time, take her temperature, change her diaper, that sort of thing and then we'd come back in the evening for the same thing. Well, we went four days without an event. And on the fourth day, she had another event. So we had to restart our counter. And every day after that, she had an event, either during the day or at night. She also had uh, jaundice, which is a buildup of bilirubin. And that's normal to have uh, as a baby and to have a high bilirubin levels and that causes the yellowing of the skin, but it can be dangerous if it's too high. So she was on some light therapy. She had a light blanket that she slept on, as well as a light that was over the top of her and these like little Catwoman goggles. I'll put like a little, I have a video of her and uh, I'll put that here, um, of her on her light therapy uh, blanket with her lights all around her. Um, but the jaundice went away very quickly they took her off of the light therapy and it was just a matter of her not having these events where her heart rate would drop, her blood oxygen would drop and she would stop breathing. I'm pretty rough. I mean, just to be a hundred percent transparent and honest, it was not easy dealing with hearing that every single day we had to start over the wait for our daughter to come home. My wife and I were both on, we still are uh, both on leave from our jobs and we were losing time that we could have been bonding with her at home. And we understand that it was for her safety, but it doesn't make that any easier of a pill to swallow. So it was, sorry. It was really difficult and Not only was it difficult to know that I 
couldn't bring my daughter home, but to watch my wife be so sad. Also not very easy and there was nothing, nothing I could do at all to help the situation. I was completely helpless and that really bothered me a lot. After two and a half weeks, almost three full weeks, she made it five days. We were able to pass the car seat study and then we got to room in. Um, so the hospital that we were at is level three NICU and they have a, uh, what they call family rooms where you can go and stay the night with the baby in the hospital, almost like a, a hotel room. They have food you can order in the morning for room service and, or that night for dinner. They have a TV and a bathroom and a bed and the whole nine. We're able to check out the next day and finally bring her home. We, we had used our time that she was in the hospital to button up a lot of stuff at the house. Um, we cleaned up her room, cleaned up her bathroom, the guest bathroom. Um, we moved a bunch of stuff into the garage. I cleaned the whole garage out with my mom. Um, had a friend of mine come over to help me hang the TV on the wall. And we actually had the privilege of having some friends set up a meal train for us. So every couple of days, they have been, um, friends of ours have been sending food by to be delivered or bringing food by themselves um, to help us um, focus on our daughter more. Um, and we got started on the adoption process here in Texas. Even though my wife and I are legally married, I do not have parental rights to my child. So I have to apply through the courts to be the second adoptive parent. We're, we also have to pass a CPS inspection. There's gonna be a home inspection. Super frustrating because as somebody who is in the LGBT community, my marriage certificate, the fact that I have a legally binding document that I'm married to my wife and that we entered into the IVF process together, that should be enough. Cisgendered, heteronormative couples don't have to go under an inspection. They don't have to be under a microscope in order to have rights to their child because they're both biologically involved. But the fact that I'm not biologically involved in the process means that I have to apply to adopt my own daughter, which is super crazy. Um, but like I said, in light of the Roe v. Wade turnover, was super anxious, so we already have a lawyer working on that. I uh, wanted to share some of that with you guys. It is such a wild ride. That should be enough for this video. I want to thank everybody out there who has checked in on us, who has sent us food or money for food or things off of our registry still are being bought and sent to us. Our neighbor dropped something off just today for the kid. So thank you everyone for your generosity. We certainly appreciate it. And just wanna thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts because it's very nice to know that we have friends and family that, that love us and they love our little girl. And I'm tearing up again, I'm just a big old softy. Ugh, my wife is probably in the other room laughing at me right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and as always, we will see you on the next video.
little baby girl. <laughs> That's my daughter giving her mom a bunch of lip. <laughs>